Passing. Passing. Is you. What up, boys? My name is Tasty. And today, I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks to steal the MVP at top pretty much every single time. Now, the beautiful thing about these tricks I'm going to show you guys is that they require almost no skill. And you're probably thinking like, yo, Tasty, Tob is like end game content. This is some of the hardest stuff that RuneScape has to offer. Surely I need some skill. Personally, I'm sick as hell at this game. But as a general rule of thumb, absolutely not. And that is because the strats I'm going to show you guys don't rely on making yourself a better player. They rely on making your teammates worse. There's a theme throughout Tob that I want you guys to remember, and that's that this is the big leagues. You know, this is not some Fisher Price raid like Chambers is Eric. Just because these people are on your team doesn't mean you're not enemies. Anyway, boys, let's hop into it. So before we get started, uh, obviously you guys are going to want to be in world 416 or a we do raids field. This is very important and you're going to have this gear set up here. The scythe is a hard requirement guys, but if you can't afford one, honestly, that's okay. You probably speak Spanish, so you're probably not watching this video. Uh, anyway, you're going to want to be on lunars. I will get into that in a little bit. Uh, other than that, mage gear is really not important. You're going to want dragon darts in the blowpipe, vendrunes in the pouch. Uh, this Dragon Warhammer here is mainly decorative. It's really kind of a last resort thing to use this yourself. Uh, throughout the entire TOB, you're going to want to wait for your teammates to use their Dragon Warhammers. And as soon as they do, you dump both your claws. So keep that in mind. All right, now let's get it started. Rule number one, guys, cheat client. Download blue light immediately. I can't technically tell you guys to use it, but seriously, read between the lines, guys. Everyone over 400 KC uses it. Everyone who's better than you probably uses it. Uh, you can cry about gamer integrity like all you want, but I have a seven bill bank and your girl's in my POH, so legit, I don't care. Anyway, first room here is Maiden. You're just gonna run in and start scything it, guys. The blowpipe is for women and children. Uh, and just remember, you are never going to freeze in this room. If your team asks you to freeze, you know, uh oh, look who forgot to change their spell book. Uh, that does not give you MVP points, guys. And you know, they're, they're like the EHP nerds that speculate that, oh, crab damage does give MVP points, but I'm gonna be real with you, those kids are 100% the same kids that like growled at the other students uh, in the hallway when they were in high school. So uh, don't listen to anything they say. Once again, remember to wait for your teammates to dump their dragon warhammers. As soon as they do, dump both your claws. Ignore the crabs completely. Uh, your teammates are definitely gonna pick up the freezing. And even if they don't, you know, that's really not that bad because it just gives the boss more HP for you to do damage to. So kind of a win-win in the end. Just tank and spank this room guys it's it's really pretty simple it should be an easy mvp for you if you do all the things i've listed here okay so bloat is next here and first things first you're gonna want to be the person who enters the hallway but make sure you are not the one who enters bloat's room now this is not actually good uh, but it tilts your teammates so i consider that a win uh, now, when Bloat's going down here, I would take this opportunity to flame your teammates for their gear or their performance on Maiden just to kind of add a little extra sting. But Bloat is actually one of the rooms where being good does help a little bit if you know how to flinch the corner because it's, it's just free damage. Uh, you fly your teammates a little bit. Really, it's, it's just kind of good all around. Um, if you're confident with dodging the hands, you can fly your teammates on purpose even more, uh, you know, make them brew down a little bit. But honestly, this is 416 so your teammates are dog water and they're probably going to die regardless uh this one kind of sorts itself out really not much to say here guys oh man nyla this room sucks dude it's honestly the worst room in top and honestly it's not even a super important room because the waves aren't worth any mvp points so you can really do whatever you want uh, just make sure you refuse to do any other role than ranging that one is the easiest and you take the least damage so uh, as soon as you enter it doesn't matter who called what put on your range gear and just refuse to de-gear someone else will change into to whatever you need don't worry about it. it it almost always works out now because this room is not worth any mvp points uh i i would take this 
time to commit a bit of psychological warfare, try hanging out in the sides of the room a little bit and leaving your aggros up to damage your teammates, you know, lower their supplies a little bit. Um, there's not a huge amount you can really do in this room. So I would say use this time to uh, flame your teammates for very small things. Just help get the tilt going. Uh, my personal favorite is spam question marks with no discernible reason or follow up, not like targeted at anyone. So everyone thinks it's them and then they get nervous. Uh, it's what we call a pro gamer move. Other than that, no real way to PK people on the boss. You can try to move it if you want so people mess up their clicks, but really not a huge deal. This is just one where you kind of send it till the end, boys. All right, on to Soda Seg here. Now, this is actually one of my favorite rooms in the entire raid, uh, and this is also where Lunars will come into play. So if you decided to bring Venge runes, you are going to be Venging in this room. And just a side note about Venge itself, it does not give you any extra points. It just takes away from the health pool of the boss. So it's not necessarily like beneficial to use it here, but you know, it's not bad either. It's just, it's neutral. But the thing is you are not going to be venging yourself. All right. You are going to be venging your teammates. Now, remember, since it doesn't give them any points or anything, you aren't helping them. But what you are doing hopefully is encouraging them to take, you know, more damage to get a big venge on the boss. Obviously, this is going to siphon their supplies and require them to brew back up. So really, it's a pretty big win win for you. Now, the two special mechanics on this boss are actually what make this my favorite room in the raid, and they're great for you. So the first one is the death ball, and that's the big one that comes out. So if this is on you, do it as normal. Just stack up with everyone and spread the damage. But if someone else gets the death ball, stack with everyone, pretend you're going to take it and one tick before it hits, you're gonna to wanna to run off back to your square. Blame it on a misclick, blame it on whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just as long as you're not taking the damage and they will be taking even more damage. So once again, huge win-win for you. Now, second mechanic is the infamous maze here. Uh, and this is once again, where being good will help a little bit because if you get chosen, you are going to immediately one tick the entire maze. Flame anyone who dies, flame anyone who gets hurt. Uh, try out those question marks I was talking about earlier. Spam those. Now, if you don't get chosen, uh, I would recommend doing it pretty much as normal, but rag a few tiles just to keep your teammates on their toes. And of course, as soon as you get back to the boss here, uh, they're going to be dumping their dragon war hammers. So get ready to uh, claw spec. Anyway, that is sort of say in a nutshell here. Really a fantastic boss overall. It gives you plenty of great opportunities to rag your teammates and it reveals who the, uh, the weak link in your team is. So make sure you target them and make sure they crack. Now, Zarpus is next here. This is actually a, a pretty fun one. It's the second to last boss. Uh, and once again, a, a time where being good can in fact help, but we'll get into it. Uh, before you do anything in this room, you're gonna wanna wait for your teammates to enter and start the healing phase. So if, if you're unfamiliar with the phase, uh, you know, a bunch of these little dudes pop up on the ground. You gotta stand on them because they heal the boss. This does not give any MVP points, so you're not gonna do it. Say BRB in chat and AFK the entire first phase. Okay, enter when it's all over. Over and ideally for this boss, you're gonna wanna do the five tick scythe method. It is by far the most DPS, but it is quite hard. So if you don't know how to do it, that's fine, you're actually gonna do it anyway. Just don't try to do it like right or anything. Um, you can rag any tile you want in this room. Just make sure your scythe is hitting every five ticks, guys, because every tick you miss is one more chance for the Venezuelan who brought Dehyde for some reason to uh, get the drop over you. So you just wanna make sure that does not happen. Now, ragging every tile is actually not good for you. In fact, it makes everything worse for everybody. But at this point, it's really just about the psychological warfare, so. Uh, hopefully your teammates are afraid of you at this point and now is around the time when you should probably turn off your public chat But really this is kind of preference and if you ignore the mechanics this boss is actually pretty easy And now this is really important guys So listen up as soon as the boss dies You're gonna want to run to the staff at the end of the room and pick it up. You want the staff It doesn't matter that you're dropping a brew for it. Honestly, this is gonna be totally worth it It's very important that you are the one who controls the staff for the start of Verzik. All right, onto Verzik. Now, this is the final room and probably the hardest. This one is really, really a balancing act here because your teammates are gonna have to be alive for most of the kill, but there are still a few important tactics that we can utilize. So remember how you took that staff. Good, you're gonna start the fight. Ignore the orb order. You're gonna dump your staff specs, but make sure you keep the staff. Run back to the pillar. The guy next will probably wait for it, which is good. Don't drop it for him. Keep DPSing. 
Now the point here is not to keep the staff forever because your teammates do have to spec to kill Verzik, but only drop it when someone specifically types in the chat to drop the staff. They have now wasted ticks by typing. You can drop the staff. Let them cycle through all of their specs now and then pick it up as soon as you have spec back and you can hold on to it for the rest of the fight. You should be fine at this point. On to phase two. So not much to say here, but there are a few things to go over. Uh, number one, you can definitely try to pop your crabs on top of your teammates, but not totally necessary. Uh, important to note that if you get the purple crab on you, as I have done here, ignore it. Your teammates are probably going to get annoyed and take care of it themselves. Uh, as you can see here, my teammates have clued into my toxic behavior and they actually pop it preemptively for me, which is best case scenario. So problem solved there. Anyway, you're just going to kind of tank and spank this back bad boy till it gets down to 35% and starts healing. When the red crabs come out, you're going to do a maximum of one hit on the red crabs and get back on the boss as soon as possible. Do not lose any ticks here. If you're feeling particularly spicy, you could try challying the boss while it's healing just to kind of annoy your teammates, but uh, I would only do that if you're confident in the DPS. So phase three, we're getting to the finale here. Now, if you're tanking, that sucks. You're gonna have to do the uh, the one tick step under method here, which does lose a little bit of DPS, but it's better than running until someone else gets the tank. That just loses too much DPS. It's not viable, unfortunately. You can use your tanking powers to melee people towards the end of the fight, but I would only do that if you're really comfortable with the DPS. Hopefully you just won't be tanking here. Now going on to the special mechanics of phase three. First is crabs. Those aren't important. Ignore those completely. Second, of course, is webs. And now this is where you're going to want to take a bit of a gamble. Run webs like normal, except start one tile ahead of your teammates. Now, hopefully your teammates are not complete glue eaters and they see you one tile ahead and they will run off of the boss. This is best case scenario because now you're going to absolutely demolish them in DPS. Now, the reason this is a gamble is because if your teammates suck, they're going to continue running webs and they're going to get webbed themselves which means you can no longer run another circle around Verzik here so it's going to be overall a dps loss but to be honest once again going back to the psychological warfare this is a gamble that i would take 100 percent of the time also if you do see one of your teammates get webbed uh, under no circumstances are you going to help them just let them take the damage it'll be fine for the yellow balls you're going to want to do these as normal and for the green ball if you get this obviously you're going to want to pass it preferably to the tank because it's hardest for them to deal with it because they're taking a little more damage than normal anyway and yeah just kill the boss here boys tank and spank dump those specs uh and at this point you should have 100 accumulated enough mvp points to take mvp for the raid head into that loot room see if you got yourself a juicy purple and uh guess what you might have but even if you haven't guys you got something more valuable than gp and that is the salty tears of your idiot teammates